Your defensive lineman, DeMarvin Leal. Uh, we'll ask DeMarvin to make an opening comment about the season and then we'll take your questions. DeMarvin, as you head into the 2021 season, just talk about your excitement for getting back out and, and continuing after a fantastic season last year. Um, I'm very excited to be able to get after it this season. It's going to be an amazing season, especially with the 100% capacity. Uh, being back in Kyle Field with everybody there is going to be amazing and definitely looking forward to the blessings this year. All right, thank you, Demi Irvin. Uh, Jessica, Peyton, and Emma have microphones. If you've got questions, uh, we will get them to you. I think we're going to start up here on our right-hand side, Demarvin. Right over here to the right. Hey, Demarvin, David Nuno, TechSags.com. Just uh, talk about the mood of the program right now after the success last year, how you guys are feeling and vibing heading into this fall camp. Uh, heading into fall camp, we're just being able to just being able to get back together as a whole and getting after it is, is something I've been waiting for for a long time and we're looking forward to setting our standard and showing our standard and just showing how the culture in Aguilar has changed. Okay, we'll go back over here to the left and uh, Olin. Yeah, Marvin Olin Buchanan, Tex Ags. Uh, how good do you think this defense can be and um, can it be as good as last year without Bobby Brown and, and Buddy Johnson and what they meant? I said that this defense, the limit for this defense is the sky, beyond the sky, honestly. And it, we're not going to miss a beat with those guys gone. You know, they helped us out a lot and respect to those guys, and the most respect to those guys. But we have guys that stepped up this spring and continue to step up this summer. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they do throughout the season. Hey, Marvin, we'll go all the way to the back on this. That's right, right up there. See uh, Marv, Mark Passwaters with Rivals. I uh, wanted to ask a little bit about just your defensive ends group. It's with you, Michael, and Tyree, you got a lot of experience there, but you also got some young guys. So can you talk a little bit about what you're seeing from everybody? Everybody's just helping each other out. I mean, we compete getting to the QB. We compete throughout workouts. So we're just making sure that we keep our standard where it's at and making sure that we know that every single day that we have each other's backs and that if we want to be successful, we can't do it alone. We got to do it together. Okay, we'll go right down front here to the left here with Bob. Um, hi, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I, I assume you, you've, you face a Kenyon in practice. If so, what, what are your thoughts on him? Uh, how do you think he rates with the other great tackles in the league and what do you think about the offensive line overall a lot of new guys but Kenyon said he's he feels pretty good about the group uh I feel very confident in our offensive line and Kenyon Green he has been fantastic at amazing at just showing those guys those young guys how to do it what to do and just man that's in my personal opinion he's the best offensive lineman in the SEC and going against him every day it's a blessing because iron sharpens iron. And to be where we want to be, we need to have guys like us going at it and showing the young guys how to compete and how to practice the correct way. Okay, we're going to go over to the right. Robert. Uh, Robert Sess of the Bryan College Station Eagle. Uh, Jimbo talked about going against the uh, offensive tackle from Tennessee. Johnson had transferred. He said, you, you had firsthand knowledge of how good he was. Could you talk about that game, what you remember about him? Uh, Tennessee game against him was it was a good game and we definitely had through blows back to back so I'm definitely excited that he joined our squad and iron sharpens iron so I'm just ready to get get to work and keep it get it rolling have additional questions raise your hand we'll go ahead and get Bob up here on the front left you know, Jimbo Fisher said he feels really good about you guys. Obviously, he had to go out there and prove it. But you lost a lot of great players. But it seems like with the recruiting classes he's putting together, it's reloading, not really rebuilding. How do you feel about the talent level? And do you feel like you guys can uh, challenge for a playoff spot? Can you repeat that, please? Um, C Coach Fisher you know, says he very, feels very good about you guys. But obviously, you, you got to go out there and prove it. How do you feel about like the talent level on this team? Do you feel like you guys can, can be a playoff team? And is there extra motivation after coming so close last year to, to making the playoffs? Oh, this team is, we're ready. It, we're, 
we know what our standard is, and we know we've all made, made a commitment to each other just to be the best that we are and to do that every single day. And as long as playoffs, we're definitely going to be able to work our tails off to get there. And tomorrow we'll go over to the right-hand side again about halfway back. Hey, Demar, Travis Brown with the uh, Bryan College Station Eagle. Um, I know you've taken a, had a chance to, to join with a, a marketing group. What has NIL meant to you, and what do you think the possibilities could be for you in the future? Um, don't really want to talk about the NIL, but it's definitely been amazing and very exciting. And just being able to focus on football is my main goal right now, and just being able to show our young guys what our standard is and what we need to do to be successful. I think we have another one right there as well. Yeah, I'll ask one more. Um, as, as far as uh, I know, Commissioner Sankey said earlier that six of 14 teams have been vaccinated 80% or more. What is the vaccination effort? How would you describe it? And, and what is the thoughts on vaccines amongst the team? And, and could it bring a competitive advantage this season? Um, I feel like our team has done a fantastic job being able to stay safe with COVID and our trainers have done a fantastic job to tell us about the vaccinations and just filling, filling us in on the, the pros and the cons of it, the side effects, and it's just been nice to have them around and let us, let us know what, what, it, what it is that we need to do. The questions raise your hand, and we'll get a microphone to you while we wait. Marvin, talk about uh, Texas A&M has always had uh, very talented defenses. What's it like to be at an institution and a program and play on that Texas A&M defense to represent that university in that way? Our defense is able to represent in a fantastic way because defense is what wins championships. So coming to A&M as a whole, we already knew what it was going to be and what the expectations were, not only for ourselves, but for the 12th man. Defense means everything to our 12th man, and just being able to make them proud is a blessing. All right, we'll go back up here in the front uh, to Bob. Yeah, I, you know, uh, Jimbo Fisher was talking the Houston Touchdown Club, I guess a few weeks ago or months ago or whenever it was, and got asked, I, I'm paraphrasing here, but, you know, are you, are you hoping Nick Saban will retire so you guys can beat Alabama? And I think his response was essentially, well, we're, we're going to beat him while he's there. That's the plan. How, how good do you feel about your coach uh, being confident like that, not backing down at all? And w w when you heard about that, what, what was your reaction? My reaction was just that Jimbo has the most confidence in us, and he knows what we can do, and he knows how we're going to do it. And so his comment, I just loved it because it shows how much he believes in us, and it shows having a coach like that to stand behind you, and it matters a lot. All right, Marvin, we're going to go over here on the right side on the near aisle, and just in the back. Marv, this, this question may be a little sillier than some of the other serious ones you've had, but a couple of weeks ago, Jaden Peavy said that he wasn't sold on the, na the nickname of the Wrecking Crew coming back, that he thought that this was a new bunch. Where do you stand on the bringing back the Wrecking Crew nickname debate? I have all respect for the, the Wrecking Crew, and I would say that this generation has different. So I would say taking their name, that's not something we should do. It's a new generation, it's a new culture, it's a new Aggie land. So I would say that there is a name that we're going to come up with, but it's not the new Wrecking Crew. All right, other questions? Raise your hand. All right, right up here, Bob. Do you, do you know what the Nick new name's going to be? Are you guys talking about that? Or is that something you can, you can break here at Media Days? Or what, what's the deal? <laughs> uh, I would have to say that we're going to keep that one under wraps. And stay tuned. It's, it's going to come. We just have to deserve the name first. All right. Uh, any final questions? Marvin, thank you very much for your time. Good luck this season. Thank you. God bless you all.